Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profits. Welcome to the Bet Central podcast, powered by Betcoza. I'm your host Wanele Posuayo, and as always, I'm joined by UFC expert Asha Arons. On today's um, episode, Asha will, Asha and I will each go through our UFC pound for pound rankings for both the women's and men's divisions. Um, yeah, it's an exciting one today. Before we get things going, Asha, um, how's it going today? Onele, very nice to be back with you and uh, to be doing something quite different. Uh, admittedly, it is a hard task at hand. It's better to predict fights than to give our favorite fighters. But, you know, I enjoy the challenge and, yeah, very happy to get into it. Uh, naming the t- my top 10 women, top 10 men. I- I'm excited to see what you're going to say and uh, see where we differ and where we might um, agree. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually also excited for, for your list because it wasn't really easy coming up or compiling this list of top 10 fighters because you have your favorites and you just and you you have the people that you don't not really fans of but deserve to be on the list so it's not an easy task but um i'm kind of hopeful that my list is pretty decent so yeah i think we can start with you with the women's division um so we're both going to be giving our top 10 for the men's and women's division so who is your number 10 when it comes to the women's pound for pound ranking Great. So, uh, really happy to, to, to start over here. I think 10 is a lot, but um, I'm going to be bold. And for number 10, I'm going to go with Manon Firat, the, the French fighter. I think she's awesome. I think I'm placing her at 10 because of uh, maybe a recency bias, but I also there's also some futurology there. I think uh, there's a lot of potential there. And I, I'm going to keep her at uh, number 10 for me, top in my top 10. Um, that's an actually an interesting one. I'm kind of surprised that you have her um, in your top 10. But yeah, I think I understand your, your thinking. But I've gone for Jessica and Raj. Maybe a surprise that she's maybe this low. I'm not sure. But yeah, she's won five. Um, no, she's won two of her last five fights. She's lost her last two to Erin Blanchfield and Yan Nan. So she's kind of hit like a dip in, in, in form. She is a former champion, but... When you look at the, the current rankings and who's um, the best pound for pound, for me, she she's at number 10. Definitely. Good choice, good choice, Manelia. I think that's a very close one. I, that'll be a good fight as well. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I'm going to go uh, first with the number nine. My number nine is Yan Zhou Nan. She, yeah, recently beat Jessica and Raj. So, I feel like she kind of has to be above her. And the fact that she finished Jessica, she's probably in line for a, for a title shot later this year or maybe early next year. Um, yeah, I think she's got a bright future behind her. Maybe might struggle to get past the current strawweight champion. But yeah, my number one, number one, my number nine, Yan Jonan. Yeah, very nice call there, Hunele. That was a great fight. Um, I think we were both surprised with that fight. I think... We thought Andrade was going to go the distance, but very good choice. I'm going to go with Amanda Rebus at number nine, um, just for, you know, still being on the roster. She's done a lot. She's lost a few fights, but, you know, she had a very good um, season during the pandemic. And, you know, th- there's still a lot of fights uh, within her. So I'm, I'm going to go with Amanda Rebus for number nine. You know, one of my favorite fighters as well. Really great fighter. And I think she, she earns my number nine spot. Yeah, man, this is kind of interesting so far because your uh, number 10 and number 9 aren't even on my top 10. <laughs> so it kind of um, um, it kind of says a lot about how we both um, think of these um, women's fighters. So, yeah, my number 8, I, I feel like this one is a bit of a surprise or will be a bit of a surprise. I'm sure she's probably not on your list. But I've gone for Erin Blanchfield. Um, she did beat Jessica and Raj, although it was a short notice fight for Anraj. Um, she's currently 5-0 and in the UFC. And when you look at her future, her future looks bright in, in the UFC, especially in that flyweight division. So, yeah. I'm sure it's a bit of a surprise because nice. she hasn't really done a lot in, in the UFC in her career so far. But I, I'll rank her above both Jessica and um, Jan. She's been active though. She's good, and you know she's she's a great fighter, and I love watching her fights. She's very she's a very good fighter. Um, just kind of in a strange position, you know, kind of like a, where Derek Lewis is now in the heavyweight division. 
um, great fighter, but just, you know, not picking up a, a run of wins um, consecutively, kind of just, you know, being very um, inconsistent, but good choice. Uh, you know, we're at number eight now, right? Yeah, eight. Eight. Oh, okay. So, you know, now it gets closer to one. For number eight... I'm going to go with Amanda Limos. Um, she's a great fighter, great boxer. She recently fought and, you know, I, I think she deserves to be within the top 10 of, of women's fighters on the current uh, roster. She's a great fighter and, yeah, she's earned my number eight spot. Yeah, that's actually a, a pretty good pick. Um, once again, you've picked another one that's not on my <laughs> top 10. But, yeah, she'll be fighting for the title against um, Zhang Weili, UFC, what's it, UFC 291. From night twenty two, twenty two. Yeah, it should be ninety two because ninety one is um, gay gen. Actually, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, she's fighting mm-hmm. for the title next. Um, good choice. But yeah, another one that's not on my list. I've gone for Carla Esparza, former two time strawy champion. Yeah, understandably, her her stock has um, taken a bit of a hit recently. She. The way she won the title against Rose de Mayunas, the like the most boring fight of all time. Not really sure who won that fight. And then she got finished in the second <laughs> round by Zhang Wei Li. Um she got finished in her I think her strongest uh facet of the of the fighting game, which is on the ground, and she got finished there. So she might be a bit low when you look at her resume because she's beaten quite a few good fighters. Um she's beaten Alexa Grasso, Yan Jo Nan, and Rose Lama Yunus, although we all know what happened um, against Rose. But yeah, my number seven is um, Carla Esparza. Great choice. And you know what? I think there's a fighter there. She's a great fighter. And, you know, that Rose fight was just strange. And I think no fighter wanted to take risk in that fight at all, um, which is surprising from Rose and from Carla. Uh, Rose is also in a w- weird spot right now. But, you know, we could we could do a, a whole podcast on Rose number Eunice. Number seven, you've gone with Carla Esparza. I'm going to go with Mackenzie Dern at number seven. Uh, I think she had an, a fantastic weekend. We saw a, a different animal there. And, um, you know, what what a fighter. And just to hear some of the personal issues she was going through during that camp, just awesome, man. And she's going to earn my number seven spot. Uh, I'm sensing a lot of recent bias when it comes to your picks. Um, because I don't want to lie, I was also impressed with um, the way she fought in a recent fight, Mackenzie Dern. Um, it was a different Mackenzie. I mean, she looked like uh, a potential future uh, contender or future champion. She did call out Rose Namajunas, which I feel like it would be a fantastic fight, especially a fantastic. Fantastic, fight. fantastic. Especially, especially for Dern, um, huge opportunity for her. Hopefully, um, Namajunas um, accepts the, the challenge. I mean, that would be a huge, huge fight, pay per view fight, even a co-main uh, featured fight, maybe to headline the fight night. Um, yeah, so I feel like that's a, it's a decent choice. But once again, um, I've kind of overlooked Mackenzie Dern. I think that's fantastic matchmaking, Ronelli. Mackenzie Dern against Rose Namajunas. That's fantastic. I think that's a fight that would bring the best out of Rose. Um, you know, fighting someone uh, lo- lower ranked than her, you know, that's a big risk. But also someone that's not going to play it safe. Mackenzie Dern doesn't have a title. She's fighting for it, and she's gonna bring out the dog in Rose. And it, when you bring out the dog in Rose, whoa, we, we see amazing stuff. So I think that's fantastic matchmaking from you. Um, awesome. That, yeah, that I think that would be definitely something we talk about um, on our Talking Points podcast. I mean, I, I'd like to talk a bit more about this potential fight. Um, like I said, I was impressed with Mackenzie Dern. I'm actually quite a big fan, not not the biggest of fans, but a big fan of hers. Her skill sets on the ground. Um, so yeah, interesting fight. Hopefully it does happen. But yeah, moving on to to my number six. Another interesting one. I've gone for Juliana Pena. Um, this one is a bit tricky for me because she is the former champ, but I'm not really her biggest fan. But she's the former champ. She did beat and submit Amanda Nunes. She's won three of the last five. Um, but her previous previous fight against Amanda. It didn't really look good for her because she got dominated, even though she didn't get finished. Credit to her for not getting finished because I think she was dropped three to four times. So it wasn't really impressive from her. But 
when you look at her resume, her the fact that she's a former champion, just beat Amanda Nunes. I feel like she deserves to be um, number six. Although I'm not the biggest of her fan, not the biggest fan of Juliana Pena, but yeah, she she takes my number six. Uh, we have the same number six. I was also going to go with Juliana Pena. Awesome. Yeah, no, she was the champion. She deserves, uh, you know, a spot above there. And uh, in the first fight, she 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 defeated Amanda fair and square. Um, fair and square. Um, you know, if you want to play devil's advocate. I, there, there are some who say she wasn't really dominated by Amanda that much in their last fight, right? You know, there, there are some advocates of Juliana Penner, and there are advocates still who think that there should be another fight. Um, I was, a, I was really impressed with her in that first fight. You can say anything about Amanda and you know not showing up, you know tapping too quickly, but. It was it was awesome from Juliana Pena, and she she was a you know a champion. She and she deserves that number six. So we're equal there at number six. Yeah, I'm glad we finally have um like we equal <clears throat> when it comes with this. Uh, yeah, when it comes to Juliana Pena, like I feel like she got dominated in that fight. I, I'm sure like there are some people who feel like she did pretty well. It was a close fight, but she, I think uh, Amanda Nunes showed like that there are levels to this. Although you do make a great point, Juliana Pena won the first fight fair and square. She dominated, not really dominated, but she looked very good in the first round. I think she finished it in the second round. She also looked good there before she finished um, Amanda Nunes. So I'm not taking anything away from that victory. It was no fluke. She beat Amanda Nunes. Second fight, Amanda, even though she couldn't finish it, she dominated and showed um, that she's she is the better fighter. And I feel like the third fight, if it happened... Um, I feel like Amanda was going to close the story with uh, a finish, probably a knockout. I think a knockout. I don't think she can probably finish uh, Pena on the ground. Pena is, she's good on the ground. So, yeah, that's another, that's another what do you call it, story for another day, another topic for another day. But I'm glad we both agree with Juliana Pena is number six. My number five, I hope, I feel like we have to agree on this one. Hopefully we do. My number five is Rose Nama Yunus. Um, Fantastic fighter. Um, I'll try not to be too critical of a previous fight. But she, other than that, she's a fantastic fighter. She's beaten Zhang Weili twice. Beaten Joanna Janjacek twice. So that is extremely impressive from her. Two-time story champion. Apart from apart from the recent fights, I mean, she, she'd probably be in my top three, if, we, if we're being honest. But... Yeah, she lost the title, boring fight, wasn't impressed with the performance, so I'll give I'll give number five to Rose number Yunus. Not sure what you made of that. Yeah. Also, Manele, um, we're not going to agree with it, but we're not far off. So what I'm going to tell you is my number five and then my number four. Number five, I'm going to go with Alex, Alexa Grasso, number five, the recent champion. She deserves to be there. Amazing fighter absolutely insane what she did to Valentina. I mean, I could watch that fight. I need to go watch that fight again. Beautiful fight. Beautiful submission. Tactical, just precision and class. And that was a good Valentina. I'm going to go with Val- I'm going to go with Alexa Grasso at number 5 and then I'm going to go with Rose Namajunas at number 4. Yes, Rose had a terrible last fight when she lost it, but there's a fighter there. And when she's back, we we can't so, yes, I have had a bit of recency bias, but now I'm just going to go back on that and, you know, give some props to Rose and, and add her at number four. Um, yeah, you know, now now that you mention it, I'm kind of, I kind of feel like, um, for me, Alexa Cross is a bit too high uh, on my list. But I, I kind of, looking at it, when you, when you won, when you've beaten an opponent and you've finished her, um, no matter what she's done in the game, I feel like you should be above her. Um, but so, which brings me to my number four. My number four is Valentina Shevchenko. Um, I think this might be a bit controversial considering like she's done so much in the game. Um, before before losing to Alexa Grasso, I mean, she was on a nine-fight uh, winning streak. Only, only losing twice to Amanda Nunes. The second fight was a bit debatable. Um, the fact that if it was maybe a decision loss or a close decision loss, I, I, I'll still have Valentina above Alexa Grasso. But the fact that she got finished, I'll have Alexa above Valentina, which brings me to my number three, which is 
Alexa Grasso, the new flyweight champion. So, yeah, she's on a five-fight winning streak, finished the greatest flyweight of all time, finished her impressively. So Alexa Grasso takes my number three. And then, actually, I'm just going to invert that. And my number three is going to be Valentina Shevchenko. <laughs> so and and you spoke in a lot about Valentina, awesome fighter. Of course, she lost the belt in her last bout, but you know, an amazing fighter, an amazing you know, run of wins consecutively, just dominating and dominating. And she looks hungry. She's in a bit of a Kamara Usman position right now. Um, I think she's hungry to get that belt back, the same way Usman is hungry to get that belt back. You know, wanting to fight Hamza Tamayev. I don't think we've seen the last of Valentina. Maybe just a little bit of complacency in that uh, last fight. But, you know, um, I'm just going to invert that. I'm going to put a Valentina at number three. Yeah, just to add on Valentina, I feel like it was definitely um, complacency on her part, but not taking anything away from um, Alexa Grasso. Like I said, she didn't win a decision or a close decision. She finished um, Valentina. But I feel like Valentina will be back. Um, I'm sure Alexa also, she'll take a lot of confidence from the win. So it's going to be a, a very interesting Probably a close uh, rematch, but uh, I think that takes us to number two. And <laughs> I kind of have a smile on my face because I know, I know um, <laughs> we kind of agree. I would be surprised if we know if we don't have the same fight on number on our number two. My number two, Zhang Weili. Um, she doesn't have like she she's lost twice to to what do you call her name? Um, Rose Number Yunus. But when you look at her recent fights, I mean, how she finished um, Carla Spars on the ground, how she knocked out Yo Joanna and Jacek with a spinning back first, um, two-time strawweight champion, and like her skills um, in the, inside the octagon, they like I feel like I always say this. I hate to say it again. She improves every time. She impresses me every time, and I feel like, and she's um, still young in my opinion. I, I think she's not in my opinion. <laughs> She is still young. Um, she hasn't reached 30 yet, so there's a bright future there. She might rack up a lot more title defenses, which might take her to number one. I doubt it, hopefully. So, yeah, who's your number two? So, that's actually funny. I'm going to invert it again. And based on not recency bias, but just more futurology, current form, style, and um, you know, just attitude and willingness to fight, um, I'm going to go with Amanda Nunes, number two, and I'm going to go with Zhang Weili at number one. And uh, that's controversial, I know, Amanda being um, the double champ and stuff, and obviously having the track record, just such a clean track record. Um, yes, Weili was knocked out by Rose number Nunes, but I think there's more potential in Zhang Weili, and Zhang Weili has the potential to become double champ. And so I'm basing this off futurology. I'm going to go with Amanda Nunes, number two, and Zhang Weili, number one. Zhang Weili is the best fighter for me on the the best female fighter on the roster, and you know she's up there with you know if they if we were doing a combined list of men and females, you know she's there in top five for me too. So, you know I'm gonna go with Weili for number one. I, I won't really argue with you um, too much on this point, especially when you when you say when you look at her skills, you look at her skill set, the way um, she's extremely well rounded. Um, and when you look at her future, her potential, because she still has a lot um, to do in the UFC. Like you said, she could she could become a double champ. So I won't I won't really. It's not as controversial as um, some people may think. Even myself, I was actually surprised that you went with her at number one. Uh, but yeah, pretty obvious who my number one is, um, Amanda Nunes. I don't need to say a lot when it comes to Amanda. To be fair, she's she's done it all. I know she is a double champ, but is she really a double champ? Because she's not really defending her belt. I think it's just for the promotion's sake to promote the fights, the fact that she's still hanging on to that belt. But yeah, she is. She did um, lose her fight against Pena. But what makes a champion is when you, how you come back, how you take that defeat and how you come back. And she did that. Same with Israel Adesanya, losing to Pereira, then coming back. So... I'll give her credit, especially how she adjusted in that fight and she went on to dominate. And I still say she dominated Juliana Pena. So, yeah, my number one is Amanda the Lioness Nunez. Awesome. Done with the females. Awesome. Awesome. And I love that, actually. You know, I look forward to seeing these fighters fight more. And I think amazing matchmaking, matchmaking on your part with the Mackenzie Dern and Nama Yunus fight. 
Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I feel like now, yeah, it's definitely time to move on to the men's pound for pound rankings. Um, this time I'll go first. Uh, my number ten is Jamal Hill. Uh, I was surprised to actually see that on the UFC's pound for pound rankings, he isn't even on the top uh, ten because he's 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 only in his UFC career has only lost once. Um, recent fight he beat dominated Glover Teixeira. Has a knockout win over Johnny Walker, um, uh, so I feel like she, she, I feel like he deserves to be in the top ten. So yeah, my my number ten, Jamal Hill, the current light heavyweight champion. Awesome choice there, Jamal Hill. Still a lot of, you know, potential, a lot of room to grow and get better as a mixed martial artist. You know, he, he handled Glover with such like precision and, you know, such calculation, and as he has so much to do you know so much to learn and he's already the champion uh, but now he's gonna go test it right so you know amazing at, at number 10 for him and i agree i'm surprised he's not in the top 10 for me number 10 is going to be max holloway um that might be controversial you might think he deserves to be higher up but he did lose three times to alexander volkanovsky and those were all three clean wins by volkanovsky i don't think max won any of those fights but max has also been one of the best bantamweights uh, best featherweight, sorry, of all time, and uh, I think he's gonna earn my number ten spot. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one, um, especially like you didn't mention he's lost three times to Volkanovski, but he has beaten the, the other fighters in the division, kind of similar to Robert Whittaker in the middleweight division. So it's it's not it's not as you said it's controversial in the sense that you you think he should be a bit higher. Um, I don't even have him in my top 10, so I don't really think it's um, that controversial. But yeah, uh, my number nine is Kamaru Usman, the former pound-for-pound pound king. Um, I think maybe you might think or people might think he's a bit low to be at number nine, but he's lost. He's lost two fights. Granted, it was to the same opponent, but he, he did get knocked out in the process. Um, lost his previous fight against Leon Edwards even though um, Edwards got deducted a point, I'm not sure which round it was in, but Edwards still won the fight by um, unanimous decision. Or was it majority? I think it was unanimous. Um, so yeah, I've gone for Kamaru at number nine. Yeah, awesome choice. Uh, yes, really sad to see Usman so low, you know, after being called the greatest fighter ever. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I was going to agree with you at, at number nine. Number nine, I'm going to go with Dustin Poirier. And then number eight, I'm going to go with Kamaru Usman. Dustin Poirier at number nine, just because of the dog he is, the fights he's had. He hasn't been undisputed champion, but, you know, he's still a champ in my eyes. He's had absolute wars. He's, you know, fought McGregor three times. He's, you know, just done it all. He's fought Max Holloway. He's fought Justin Gaethje. He's going to fight Justin Gaethje again. He's just put on such entertaining fights. And although he hasn't been undisputed champion, he's in my top 10 at number nine. And then Kamaru Usman at number eight. Um, that's that's not a bad choice to be fair. Um, I feel like you make a, you make some good good points that he does deserve to be in the top ten. I feel like um, guys like Dustin Poirier, Robert Whittaker, Max Holloway, even though um, they're not champions at the moment, you could easily have them in your top ten. The only people that have beaten Dustin Poirier are Charles Oliveira and Khabib Nurmagomedov. So those are not um, too bad people to to lose to. I mean, there's nothing bad losing to those guys. Um, yeah, like he, he is a former interim champion, hasn't been an undisputed champion yet. I might get that chance if he gets past uh, Justin Gagey. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too disappointed with him at in, in, in your top ten. I I feel like I could have him in, in my top ten, but yeah, there's just so many great fighters in the UFC men's division. Um, so yeah, my number we we at number eight now. My number eight. I feel like you might be disappointed that he is this low. I've gone for Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira, yeah, former lightweight champion. He finished Michael Chandler, finished Dustin Poirier, finished Justin Gagey. He was on an 11-fight win streak before he got finished <laughs> by Islam Makachev at UFC 280. Um, I'm sure you, you're pretty, pretty disappointed that he's this low. But yeah, Charles Oliveira. 100%. I have to... You know, I have to give you credit there. I've, I'm placing him in your top 10 and a, a little bit low, but, you know, I, I see your reasoning and I see your logic behind it. Um, yeah, Charles Oliveira, what a great fighter. Um, 
deserves to be in the top 10. You know, if he was anything lower than that, Vanelli, I think uh, I think I would have been very upset <laughs> with you. But by number seven, I'm going to go with Aljamain Sterling, um, bantamweight champion of the world. Um, an absolute stud, always fights and always makes weight. A lot of a lot of negative comments about Sterling recently. You know, I just wish Sterling didn't celebrate that disqualification win against Jan. I just wish he just, you know, his story could have been so different if he just didn't show off the title, just put it away and just acted like he wasn't the champion. It would have done wonders for his public relations, um, etc. But that being said, he's he has one of the best bantamweight resumes and is arguably the best bantamweight of all time. He's going to come in at number seven for me. Um, yeah, I, I, I won't really disagree too much about that, um, Aljamain Sterling. I feel like Aljamain is definitely in, has to be in the top 10 uh, while he's done the Bantamweight division. Um, so I'm going to give you my number seven, which is Brendan Moreno. The only difference between Moreno and Aljamain Sterling is the fact when Moreno won it, he, he lost it again. Um, Aljamain has defended his title three times, um, hasn't lost since winning the title. Um, so, yeah, my number seven, uh, Brandon Moreno. My number six, Aljamain Sterling. You've already said um, how great of a champion Aljamain is. Kind of unfortunate how he won the title and how he reacted to winning the title. But, yeah, my number seven, Moreno. Number six, Aljamain Sterling. Awesome. So, I've, I've gone for seven, Sterling. Uh, six, I'm going to go Charles Oliveira. You have spoke a lot about him. I think it's fair to put him there, um, given his amazing win streak and just the guys he knocked out and finished. Um, I don't think he deserves to be in the top five, you know, because he was just recently finished. I was going to put him uh, put him in at five, but yeah, I just thought it would be unfair and more of a, a, a bias, a heavy bias from my, from my end with him being my favorite fighter and all. But yeah, I've gone with uh, Charles Oliveira at number six and number five, Leon Rocky Edwards. Uh, actually, I'm actually uh, glad you, you mentioned that. I feel like our number five and number four are going to uh, going to be the same. Um, I've also gone for Leon Rocky Edwards to to be at my number five. I think it's a bit cl- it's uh it's close between him and Israel Adesanya. Um, the only reason I would have Adesanya above Leon is because Adesanya recently lost to Alex Pereira, the guy he lost to twice in the in in um, kickboxing. Lost to him in MMA, still accepted the rematch, came back, knocked him out. So and he was he's beaten everyone in the middleweight division. Um, so yeah, I've gone for Leon Rick, Rocky Edwards at number five. We both know I'm a huge fan of his. What he's done in in like um, welterweight division hasn't lost in like seven years. Lost, lost again. He lost, lost against um, Kamaru Usman. Then he came back, beat Kamaru Usman twice. So yeah, I've. I've, I've said a lot about these guys. Number five, Leon Edwards. Number four, Israel, the style bender, Adesanya. I've actually gone for Alex Pereira at number four. Um, and I know he's your boy. Um, <laughs> I think he's so exciting. And, you know, I mean, I'm incorporating more futurology here. I think he's going to defeat Jan. And I think the story's not over with Adesanya. I think he just skyrocketed into the UFC. You know, what a what a story. And he didn't even open up his mouth. And, you know, less is more sometimes. Um, I love Aljamain Sterling, but maybe he talks too much. Pereira is the bad guy. You know, he comes in, doesn't say much. He chases, like, almost or arguably the face of the UFC in Adesanya and just gets more fans, you know. H- how do you do that? And he's an exciting fighter, an amazing kickboxer. And, you know, I, he's not a champ. He was a champion. And I think he deserves number four. And then I think for the rest of it, we'll probably agree with the general rankings. But for number three, I'm going to go with Alexander Bolkanovsky. Man, I'm actually surprised you've gone for him at number three. Um, I was I was thinking he was going to be your number one. So you, you don't have anything more to add on why he's your number three. Because um, he's, he's been dominant in his division. I, yeah, I mean... He's, he's insane and he's one of the best fighters in the world. Three is good, you know, three is amazing. Um, but at the end of the day, he, he's fighting in a division that, let's just say, that featherweight division really hasn't been the same since McGregor, the Aldos, etc. Um, there hasn't been a lot of people putting up their hand. 
Now they are. Um, we have Yair, Yair Rodriguez. Even Yair Rodriguez, I don't think, is a match for Volkanovski. So my argument here is, has Volkanovski been so dominant because he is so bloody good? He is so bloody good. Or is there a contributing factor there that that division isn't that good? Um, and I, I think there are, I think there's, there's weight on both sides of the argument for that. You know, Volkanovski was fighting the Korean zombie. The Korean zombie has no right to be standing in that, in that octagon with him. You know, if he's calling out zombie, why? He shouldn't be there. I've never actually thought of, um, of that, um, like looking at the quality of the fighters in that division. But another thing that I actually thought about is, is he's not really even finishing most of these guys. Uh, most of his um, wins are by, by decision. I remember Henry Cejudo used to call him the decision maker. So yeah, I kind of understand, especially when you talk about the quality. I mean, he's, he's beaten Max Holloway twice, three times, um, twice as title defenses. So that makes up two of his title defenses. Another one against the Korean Zombie. You make a good point again. He shouldn't really be fighting um, the Korean Zombie. So, yeah, some great points. I, I understand your thinking. Now it, it, it makes me think about my my top three, but I'm not going to change mm-hmm. it. Um, I'm going to keep my top three. My number three is John Jones. Uh, greatest, greatest of all time, um, no doubt about it. But he hasn't really been active. He came back. Went to the heavyweight division. He beat Cyril Gunn. Even though, even though Gunn doesn't really have a ground game, he did make it look easy. I mean, it was really impressive what John Jones did. But I'd like to see a few more t- title defenses from Jones. I'd like to see him against Sergei Pavlovich, against Stephen Miocic, until you can really say that he is currently, currently the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Um, and then, should you go for number two first, or should I? Well, actually, I agree with you with number two. John Jones at number two. And I'm sure you're a bit surprised um, with that, but it's kind of the same reasoning that that you have. Um, and I think it's, you know, similar to the Volkanovski thing, but I'll let you comment more about that. Um, no, actually, Jones is my number Jones is my number three. Oh, he's number three? Yes, yeah. so... Jones is um, number three. Number three, okay, sorry. I, I, must, I must heard you. I said my number three in Volkanovski, Jones is my number two. Okay. And um, just to clarify, it's sort of the same reasoning, um, the inactive fighting, and also the same reasoning as the Volkanovski thing. That light heavyweight division has been vacuous, empty, <laughs> no challenges, just like the featherweight division. I mean, Jones was losing. I mean, some people even think he lost to Dominic Reyes, right? Now... That division looks stacked. Jamal Hill, Hiri Posaska, Jan Blachowicz, Alex Pereira. Jones should be fighting those guys. You know, those are the fights um, we wanted to see. I don't know how I feel about Jones at heavyweight. I think it's awesome that he that he did it. But, you know, in my world, I just I just hope he cuts back to 205 pounds and fights at light heavyweight again. I, I just don't see... There's killers there in the heavyweight division. And... I don't know. He's not a heavyweight fighter. He, we can have a whole podcast on this. But Jones at number two for the same sort of logic for uh, I use against um, Volkanovski, and then um, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you say your number two. Uh, my number two. Um, I'm sure you'll be pretty surprised. My number two is Islam Makachev. Um, yeah, I know he <clears throat> he did beat Alexander Volkanovski um, at UFC two eighty four. It was, it was by unanimous decision, and I feel like Islam did win that fight, although some people, mostly Alexandra Volkanovsky fans, feel like um, Alex won that fight. So I'll have Islam Makachev at number two. Um, I still feel like he needs a few more title defenses against proper lightweights, Benil Dariush, um, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gagey. Definitely, he definitely has the potential to be the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Um, I still like... Uh, he, he was on a 10-fight winning streak, beat the likes of Bobby Green, um, Drew Dober. But he's only now started to fight the elite, elite level of fighters. And I, I still feel like there's more to come from him. And I'm sure maybe this time next year, I'll be, he'll be my number one pound-for-pound fighter. So, yeah, I've gone for Islam Makachev at number two. 
and who's your number one? You know, Lovanelli, that's awesome. I love Islam Akhichev. I'm a massive fan of Khabib. I'm a massive fan of the camp at AKA and everything that they do in Dagestan. Um, it's just Islam hasn't fought the competition that Charles Oliveira's fought. Islam hasn't fought the, the competition that Dustin Poirier's fought. And he fought Bobby Green. He fought Dan Hooker. He got a title shot against Charles in Abu Dhabi. I mean, Charles was already going into that fight at a disadvantage. And I'm not I'm not crapping on, on Islam Makhachev. But he has to do more. He has to do more. And people think he lost that f- fight to Volkanovski. I love Islam Makhachev. I think he brings a beautiful dynamic to the game. But, you know, you have to understand my logic here as to why he's not even on my top 10 list. Um, and, I, I, you know, that's maybe controversial. But he's not. I love him. He's a great fighter. He beat my favorite fighter. And he's going to win a lot more ga- uh, fights. But I want to see him fight. Gaethje. I want to see him fight Benil Dariush. I think he's going to struggle against Benil Dariush. Um, but he's only going to fight him in Abu Dhabi. So is, this, is Islam always going to fight in Abu Dhabi? Is his title reign? I know it's post-pandemic. Is he always going to fight in Abu Dhabi? Have the sort of crowd advantage? It's unfair. But I still, you know, whatever. Benil could win. We'll see what happens. My number one is Israel Asanya. Amazing fighter. Lost the belt. You know, Beat Robert Whitaker twice, lost the belt to Pereira, beat Pereira, beat Jared Cannonier, you know, beat Kevin Gastelum. Just amazing. He's an amazing motivational speaker. He's an amazing, he's fairly humble in all his accolades and he's so exciting to watch. You know, I've I've, I've always had faith in, in Israel Adesanya. Uh, leading up to that, that second fight with Pereira, um, I think a few months before we said, wow, Pereira is going to do it again. And and just in that week, I saw the press conferences. We had the, we had the podcast and I said, is he going to get it done? And he knocks him out in the second round. Amazing. Just an amazing story. A rocky story. Um, Israel Adesanya is my number one fighter in the world. Um, before I comment on uh, Israel Adesanya being your number one, I have to come, on, come to the defense of my favorite uh, UFC fighter, Islam Makachev. Um, I did say that he he's only just getting started. Um, he hasn't beaten uh, the best lightweights in the world, but that that really isn't really his fault because um, most fighters in the top ten, in the top five, they didn't want to take fights against him. He 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 called out Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler didn't want to take the fight. Um, he's kind of in a similar situation. There's this Uma Namagomedov guy, um, undefeated. He's in the top fifteen. But he can't get a fight, you know. He's undefeated. People don't want to fight him. So that's that's the defense I would have for Makachev. Um, when you talk about him always fighting in Abu Dhabi, um, I understand your, your thinking. But at the same time, UFC is, is a business. Um, they need a fighter from that region to headline the Abu Dhabi, the Abu Dhabi card. Maybe Kamza Chimaev, if he fights for the title um, this year or next year, or if Shavkat Rahmanov, people like that, when they fight for the title, they'll probably headline that card. And Islam won't always fight in Abu Dhabi. I just thought I had to put it out there and defend my man. Um, yeah, when it comes to Israel Adesanya being your your number one, I feel like I feel like Islam Makachev not being in your top ten is the most controversial thing that you and I have both said on this podcast. Second to that is Adesanya being your number one. I understand um, that he's a he's a fantastic fighter. He's come back from adversity. Um, Skill wise, he's he's phenomenal. Like his takedown defense is great. His striking his striking is world class. Um, but apart from um, Alex Pereira and Robert Whitaker, you could kind of say the same about um, what you said with um, Alex Alexander Volkanovski when it comes to the competition. I mean, Jared Cannonier, um, you saw what he what he did against um, Sean Strickland. Wasn't that impressive? Um, the Paulo Costas of this world. Um, so yeah, man, I, I'm sure you have you you wanted to defend your guy. Dude, Jared Cannon is a beast. Paulo Costa is a beast, dude. Yo Romero, boring, scary guys, though, dude. Jared Cannon, yeah, you know, I don't know what happened to them in the last year or two, but when Izzy was calling them out before the fight got scheduled, I mean, that's the that's the problem as well. When the when it's the time to fight, they don't fight, and then we wait six months, and then they fight, and then Cannonier doesn't look like he wants to be there. Um, you know, Cannonier is awesome, 
And uh, one of my favorite fights actually is Robert Whitaker against um, Jared Cannonier. And Robert Whitaker is not on my list because he's lost twice to Israel Adesanya. Um, Colby Covington's not on my list. And these are two of my favorite fighters as well. Uh, but but they shouldn't be on my top 10 list, although, you know, they're two of my favorite fighters. Um, but yes, I understand what you're saying. I don't think the middleweight division has been as vacuous as the light heavyweight and the featherweight division. I do, I do get your argument, but I think Izzy's, you know, he's fought his way to that title, lost it, and then got it back. I think that's an amazing story. Um, yeah, I think if if he probably hadn't lost to to Pereira, he'd probably be number one. Um, but then again, coming back from that uh, that loss to Pereira and winning, knocking him out, he's even more impressive. So I'm, I'm not too. I don't want to criticize your number one pick, but I, I definitely do not agree with it. Uh, yeah, let me get to mine. Mine is um, Alexander the Great Volkanovski. Uh, I, I could easily be be biased here because he Islam Makachev beat him, but the way Volkanovski showed um, showed up to that fight, he was hard to take down. He was hard to keep down. Islam Makachev, he was definitely Islam Makachev's toughest fight um, in his entire career. Um, some argue that he won the fight. He he didn't win the fight, but he definitely ran him close. Um, he's and, and the way he handles himself, um, how active he is. Um, I mean, he he got offered the rematch in Abu Dhabi, didn't take it. He wanted to defend his featherweight title at um, International Fight Week. So an active fighter, always looking to challenge him, himself. He was on a long winning streak before fighting um, Makachev, undefeated in the featherweight division. So yeah. Volkanovski is my number one. He was his Israel Adesanya, so that shows a, that says a lot about um, what's it called? It's the CKB. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that, what's the what's the coach's name? Um, Eugene. Eugene. Yeah, Eugene. Yeah. Woman. Yeah. So it says a lot about um, what they're doing over there in um, New Zealand and Australia. They're obviously doing something right. Uh, mm. So yeah. My yeah, number- Luanele, I, 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 mad props to Alexander Vol- Volkanovski. Uh, I, I just wanted to play a bit of devil's advocate there, um, but an amazing fighter. I've, I've really had fun talking about this with you. Um, and Volkanovski, he is Alex the Great for a reason. And that Brian Ortega fight, you know, I kid you not, it brought me to tears. I was crying in that fight, seeing Volkanovski nearly lose the belt and the crowd going absolutely berserk with him getting out of that triangle. He's an amazing fighter. One of my favorites as well. He's number three, you know. And uh, I just wanted to add one last point to you. There's something interesting happening in the middleweight division. We have, you know, Robert Whitaker from Australia, Drikas Tuplitsi from South Africa, and Israel Adesanya from New Zealand. We have a, have a bit of tri-nations here in the <laughs> UFC middleweight division, eh? That's quite nice to see. Yeah, definitely. It is nice to see um, because those, those countries that you mentioned, they're not, not really known for their um, MMA um, backgrounds or anything. So, it's definitely nice to see. Um, great fight coming up. Uh, Drikas Dupesi, Robert Whittaker, the winner of that, potentially gets to fight Adesanya. Um, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that fight um, closer to the time because I feel like my only prediction is that Drikas is going to get murdered. Um, we're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I can change my mind closer to the time. But yeah, before we end things off, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, not much, eh? I mean, there's so much brewing with the Francis and Ganu stuff. Um, you know, you and I have a lot of respect for the UFC and stuff. We 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 speak at length about that, but you know, for a man like Dan, uh, Dana White, you know, he says he doesn't know much. He says he doesn't care much. He, but he cares a lot. He he really does. He uh, he seems panicked mm. the way he's um talking about Francis and Ganu. We've we've also seen Aljamain Sterling come up and say like. You know, why can't you just rephrase your words when you speak about me? Um, the the way you do about Connor, the way you do about O'Malley. Um, and there's there's a lot of weird stuff he says. Um, Ariel Awani, not his biggest fan, had a very good piece on on Dana White and the PFL. But you know, I I'm very happy for Francis. Francis, all he wanted was to be wished well. He finished his contract, he fought with a blown out knee. And, you know, I, I'm really resonating with Francis Ngannou and Aljamain Sterling's sentiments on 
Dana White at the moment. And it's really odd that he just can't rephrase his words, especially about Aljamain Sterling. You know, of course, he won by disqualification, but he's, I'm just so happy with the way Aljamain Sterling stood up for himself recently. Um, it's amazing to see. Yeah, just to add on that, um, Dana White sometimes can be like a terrible person um, with the things that he says. I mean, they, he did have these differences with Francis Ngannou and his comments on that shows that there is a lot of bitterness towards um, Ngannou. He could have handled himself way better there. Just just, um, just say that you wish him well, um, great deal for him and move on. And you don't have to criticize him so much. Same goes with Aljamain Sterling. And the fact that he has his favorites, the likes of O'Malley, McGregor, Paddy Pimblett. I mean, there's a pattern there of, of who, of, of the type of fighters that yeah. he likes, you know. I don't want to say it. <laughs> I don't want to say it. Um, but there's definitely a pattern. Mm. And um, he does sound panicked. Um, he, he's a very strange man at times. And yeah, listen, it's because of him we can have this podcast and talk about these fighters that we love. I respect the businessman in him. But, you know, I, I'm I'm very interested to see other options. I'm very interested to see what the PFLs are going to do. And, um, yeah, I'm very excited for the future. Yeah, man, I'm sure there's a lot to come from Dana White, um, from Francis, from the PFL. I'm sure there's a lot more that we can talk about next week and the coming week in the weeks to come. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this podcast. Um, really interesting one. Not easy coming up with your top 10 um, fighters in both the women's and men's division. But thank you, man, for compiling your list. And thanks again for your time. Thank you for joining me, Asha. Thank you, Anele. I'll look forward to the next one. See you soon, brother. Cheers.